What up, what up? It's Jonathan David Shepard. I'm here with episode two of my season of madness. Uh, this story takes place immediately after um, the last episode that I did. Um, I told the story of me trying to walk to Madison from Plymouth uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, and what, what came next was what led up to me, uh, going inpatient for the first time. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right in. Um, uh, so when I finally was reunited with my parents after my pilgrimage, um, my dad you could see it that he kind of wanted to attack me. And I told him, we we're sitting at the booth at McDonald's. And he was starting to get worked up. And I, I told him, there is a God above you. I just said that to him, there's a God above you. And all the threat seemed to disappear uh, right away. Uh, yeah, things between me and my dad were difficult and very unhealthy um a lot of anger it just wasn't very good um i lived in a state of anxiety for most of my life i guess you call it anxiety maybe it was just kind of like trying not to make too much noise um, and then that sort of branched out to me being rebellious in other ways. But anyway, um, so at the McDonald's, I felt a moment of peace after I told him there was a God above him. Um, and we ended up going back home. I imagine I slept like a rock for, you know, the next day. But then, some more crazy shit happened. <laughs> I remember I was outside with my dad. And I laid my hand on his chest and I said, we're not done yet. And I can only imagine how that made him feel. But um, It was as the sun was going down, I took him to our church parking lot. And again, this is, you know, end of November-ish. Probably it was still, would have been Thanksgiving weekend. I was convinced that my dad's anger was an evil spirit. And that I needed to channel the evil spirit so that he could exercise it out of me and send it to hell. So I took him to a church parking lot, our church, the one we grew up, the one I grew up with pretty much my whole life. Um, I got out of the car, I took my shirt off and I started jumping up and down and like working myself up into like this weird frenzy. My dad wouldn't get out of the car, uh, of course, understandably. Um, he called my mom and my sister over. My dad did eventually get out of the car. And I remember it was something between a, a rational expression of an irrational idea and a full blown psychotic break where I like contorted my face and I like, um, made obscene hand gestures and uh i think i blacked out for a second but i kind of threw myself on the ground and just started screaming at the top of my lungs and i did that for long enough for the cops to show up in an ambulance my mom and my sister were there at this point 
and I kept, as the cops were, you know, I think they put cuffs on me. They probably did, but they were trying to get me into the ambulance. I was like straining against them and yelling, cast down your enemy father. Um, and like pulling against the cops and one of the cops was like, you're pulling away from me. I don't like that. Well, and eventually they got me into the ambulance. And, I mean, knowing how cops can handle these situations, I'm lucky I didn't get tased or anything like that. But, um, I was restrained on a gurney in the ambulance. And we drove uh, to Sheboygan. Um, this is from Plymouth now. So Plymouth to Sheboygan is about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, the medical staff that I encountered, I told them to hold up the sign of the cross, like with their fingers, because I thought I was channeling a demon. I had... The only way to, like, restrain it was with the sign of the cross. And so, in the ambulance, and once I got into the hospital, um, people were, I would just tell people to, I was clearly worked up. I don't even know what I said. I'm sure I was spouting crazy shit. And, uh... Eventually, they asked me if I wanted to go into the psych ward. And I asked my dad what he thought I should do. And you could tell that he was weary of my mental state. He was just weary. And he was just like, yes, I think you should. And that convinced me. And I went inpatient. I don't know if I spent some hours before that because by the time I actually got into the mental health ward, um, the first thing I really remember about being there was I was in a group therapy session. Um, so the other patients were in a room and there was a counselor talking to them and I, I walked in and the room was already full of people and I sat down and I just started crying, just openly weeping in front of all these strangers. And I think they just sat there and kind of watched me cry. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're at eight minutes. I guess I can go a little bit farther. Um, so I discussed a little bit about what it's like to be in a mental health ward in one of my other videos. Um, but basically it's a lot of group therapy, coloring books, um, exercise is kind of a privilege. Um, I think it was the day, like the second day that I was there, my pastor and my dad showed up again uh, to come visit me. And I still had this idea that dad needed to cast a demon out of me. Um, so I somehow got them to focus on me and then I... Um, through myself well I kind of knelt down and sort of just let some evil feelings take over and I ended up on the bed a team of doctors and nurses came in and sedated me yeah so my doctor um, so there's usually just like one or two like primary doctors supervising the whole psych ward um and the buck kind of stops with them 
Um, and so the structure is those doctors kind of meet with people like, you know, once every day or every other day or as often as they can, they want to meet with everybody. Um, but most of your interactions are with social workers or with the nurse staff. Um, I remember there was one guy who never left his room. Um, apparently he was even more fucked up than me. Um, he couldn't have any visitors or anything. It was just kind of this dark void where his room was. The lights were off and it, I didn't find out much about him. I think I heard him screaming at one point, but other than that, I didn't hear anything from him. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So the story of how I ended up going impatient, that's kind of the straw that broke the camel's back of me actually going impatient. Um, yeah, and I don't remember much from when I was there. I think I was there a week, maybe. Um, I remember when I, I asserted that I wanted to leave and the doctor used his discretion to hold me for 48 hours. I guess that's the law. If the doctor deems necessary, they can hold you against your will for 48 hours in a crisis situation. I remember there was one guy that was um, trying to, one of the patients was trying to like deal drugs um, to people, which I mean, I don't think he had any drugs on him. I don't know how he possibly could have. Maybe he was like planning on hooking people up after he was out of there. But I ratted him out, I'm pretty sure. I told the nurses that that was going on, and then towards the end I was a little bit worried he was going to come and mess me up. But I got out of there before that happened. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of people who have lost their way because of drugs um, in psych wards. Um, and I mean, anything ranging from, you know, severe depression to severe mania. Um, usually, if you end up inpatient, it does have to reach kind of a level of we need to control this situation to deal with this. Um, so I, I remember one guy, he was pretty cool. Uh, but he was in there, I think, because of a suicide attempt. Um, luckily, he failed to kill himself, but he ended up in the psych ward. And he was actually pretty well together. Um he kind of, the more he was there, the more he was kind of quiet and reserved. Um, hmm. Yeah. I remember at one point during my week there, I was talking to the nurses and I was trying to like make plans to hang out with them. <laughs> After I got out, I think I was bordering on hitting on the nurses while I was in the psych ward. Which is horrible, but kind of funny to me. Um, anything else? I remember, um, I remember pretty distinctly, I ended up in the room with one of the counselors. It was just me and them, kind of before, it was like in between meetings, so it was just happened to be me and him in the same room, and he was like, Oh, it's you. Like, apparently, people, word got around about me because I was kind of that out of it. Um, I had friends that came and visited me. And 
and um, that was really awesome of them to come. It was good to see them. Um, in the years that followed, I lost those friendships. And I don't blame them for a second. I, I hope they found peace far away from me. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm kind of just going through random memories at this point, but yeah, that was, that's kind of episode two when I actually ended up in the psych ward and like what led up to that. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one.